Hi, this is Katrina. Welcome to my studio and to my channel. Today I want to talk about watercolour paper. Um, now I know there's thousands of reviews online of different papers and different suggestions and what you should or shouldn't use and all that sort of stuff. This was sort of prompted by my own investigation. Like I've been using watercolour for for quite a few years and, and sort of I've used quite a range of different papers but really um, this was spurred by this painting. Um, I have put up a, or I will put up a, um, a paint along that I did with this but there's something that really was bothering me with this paper. Now there was such unevenness in the way my paint went down on this paper and I was like I'm sure that this is because of the paper and I thought you know what I'm going to have to do a little bit of playing around and some experimenting and see what I think. So this paper is a Fabriano and it's a 25% cotton um, with the rest being cellulose. Now it is a 300 GSM and they do classify it as a watercolour paper. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to pull out my paints and I'm going to have a little bit of a play and experiment and and maybe practice a little bit on it and see whether I can get better at using this paper. So I just swatched out some swatches of, and predominantly the reason why I'm working in blues is I have a big range of blues and they have various um, intensities to them. So, and I included a dioxazine violet. Mostly because I was thinking about colours that I often use as mixing colours and colours in shadows where I'm usually going to be going over them so I'm going to be building layers with these colours. So I wanted to see how they behave particularly in those circumstances. Um, but I thought oh you know it's let's have a little bit of a play and this experiment turned into a much 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 bigger program that project than I had anticipated. So you'll see that I have swatched out each of my blues. Now these are only my Roman Smalls blues that I have with dioxazine violet. And I was thinking about, like I started this and then I worked out what I was doing as I moved on. So one thing I really noticed, even though I wasn't taking lots and lots of care, I wasn't just slapping paint down. I was, I was sort of trying to go, yeah, I want to try and do some graduated washes, but I want them fairly flat. Like, and I, I don't, re I was trying not to have, you know, obvious back runs. Now, what I did notice, I'm going to lift this up and hopefully it will focus. So you can see on this Indenthrin bloom, this really big blooms. And quite a lot of these other blues, and particularly the dioxazine violets, really irregular um, water patterns. And I thought, hmm, I didn't think I was putting down my paint that badly. wonder how it'll go on a cotton paper. So I pulled out my Winsor & Newton. So this is a Winsor & Newton... 100% cotton 300 GSM watercolour paper journal and swatched the same colours out but this time because I'm a little bit nerdy and I like things in a particular order I was like nope I'm going to start with dioxin violet and work my way so warm to cool basically with my blues and was a little bit more careful about doing like a, the heaviest heaviest and doing like my five my five dilutions and you know what I noticed these washes on the whole were a lot more even now what I have done with these was I swatched these out swatched on a heap of other papers so I've got eight different papers that I'm going to compare after they were dry, I did a lift where I just stroked three times with a flat brush, a wet flat brush, just three times and blotted. So I wasn't trying to lift any more than that. 
and then after that was dried I just got a very wet round brush and dragged fairly heavily from the most intense color across um, really just to see how much of the pigments would dislodge and carry and move around and also in a way see how so we can see here I did have a lot of water sitting on the top of this one here but you can see how much that pushed those pigments around so this paper it was really not going to help me tackle the subject that I was painting on it um, so I had challenges with uneven of what uneven washes um, the blotchiness and the pigments didn't move around and settle particularly well they lifted very very easily generally and then if I put water on like re-wetted them the pigments moved a lot more than I was expecting them to so this is why this was a very challenging paper now in comparison actually I'm gonna leave all of these open so we're gonna have a little bit of a comparison so this is the um, the Windsor and Newton version so this is a hundred percent cotton and we can see most of these washes are a lot smoother now the other reason for working with blues is that I have a good combination of granulating pigments and non granulating pigments and all of these colors are single pigments so I've tried to keep things as uniform as I can now obviously because my first swatches were so heavy pigment has transferred across as I've swatched across these different different surfaces but where the water sat on these swatches there's been a little bit of pigment movement particularly in these very heavy areas but did not move as much as on this mixed like 25 percent cotton um, the other thing is just how much smoother these washes are how much easier it was to get a flat wash there's still um, cauliflowering in the dioxazine violet um, it is a tricky pigment and generally will cauliflower and I can even see a little bit in the thalo blue as well um, though I will admit I would very rarely work particularly with thalo blues these strong um, this is probably closer to where I would work and I would probably glaze up as opposed to put down a heavy wash but that's just a personal so bamboo paper so this one was an interesting one um, I did this is the one that I did the TARDIS painting on so oh through and find it so this was a TARDIS and this is the one where I was like oh my gosh it just lifts like crazy and oh my gosh did it lift like crazy like three little passes one two three and I am back to bright white on this paper um, what is interesting with this and it is a lovely paper for this I do like how the granulation um, sits on this paper it really has a, a lovely um, interesting texture with the granulation and you can see with the flat colors the colors that are non granulating they are lovely flat washes a little tiny bit of cauliflowering and irregularity in the dioxazine violet but as I said a bit of a tricky pigment but on the whole this lifting that was <laughs> Um, so you can see how you know when I put down this wash on the top everything just floated straight up so that's the nature of this paper not something I'll ever be able to change on this paper and something to be really aware of when working on a paper like this so the next one I did this is another mixed media paper so this is a an art spectrum so this is an Australian brand um, so that's a 35% cotton um, and they say it's a cold press and a 300 GSM 
So same sort of an exercise. I've swatched out all of these colours and again you'll see a little bit of colour flowering on the dioxazine violet but on the whole again relatively even a little bit again on the the thalo blues um, not as much shifting and didn't lift quite as dramatically as the bamboo paper did so I haven't actually painted any pictures on this paper yet but I might give it a go um, these pigments just seem to sit a little bit better on this paper as a I guess as a, a non 100% cotton paper now one of the other papers I have um, this is a caddy paper little journal so this is a hundred percent cotton paper handmade in India and I love these journals so I've got all sorts of things that, like I've worked in these I think they're an adorable little journal um, actually I'll just hold it this way it's probably just easier so obviously not as big a surface area to work on so I've only got the three swatches this was actually a really great exercise and practice just at getting my washer like we should we should remember to practice our core skills occasionally so these are core skills of um, getting your wash strength the correct strength and getting a flat even wash in a constrained area so as we can see this paper just creates the most beautiful I just love the granulation on this paper so this is actually considered a smooth finish um, and it's not smooth like you would get with a hot press paper there is a bit more texture but oh this is just so beautiful with the way the granulation happens on this paper it was just such a, a wonderful reminder of why I have this paper to start off with but you can see my thalos the endanthrine and even the dioxazine there's a little bit of cauliflowering here but generally quite flat even colors yes there is a bit of pigment getting picked up and moved around on this paper although these heavy squares were very very heavy with the pigment so it did get dragged across quite well but it hasn't lifted too badly um, when I go to lift the pigments off the paper yes it does lift back but again nothing like that bamboo that bamboo just absolutely blew me away um, and then so I really I just it reminded me why I love this paper so much um, the next one I tried um, my etcher now I haven't used my etcher very much yet this is still I think I've got one painting in here so far <laughs> so it's a cute painting but um I haven't I think I'm working through some other journals before I get to it as such so a similar sort of process I did find now this is um, the etcher that is I think this is, it's still a hundred percent cotton hot press um, oh I don't think it's 300 I think that this is the two 280 or I can't remember I should have a look um, because it's hot press I did find it a lot harder to get nice smooth even washes without spending a lot of time um, although given that I wasn't really really working to try and be extra careful they're not bad and I'm not getting much in the way there's a little bit of cauliflowering up here but that's actually from that wet stripe that I put along the top the lifting I think is a good range like it doesn't lift as as straight like as easily as the bamboo but it still lifts so it's it's a good practical paper particularly for a, a sketching journal but generally the endanthrine and the thalo nice even even washes granulation 
just not seeing it as much on the etcher like compare the granulation between these two papers so you can see that um for exactly the same pigment and put down in a very very similar manner and this is a smooth paper as well the granulation is just so different and it really does come down to the way that paper reacts with the pigment so just because you're not getting the effects that you think you should, it could be down to the paper that you're using. Now, the next one is, this is um, a Chinese brand that we get a lot in Australia. So this is Bohong. Um, now the paper I've tested, this is a, a block, so, but I've actually tested this in an, on an off cut of a sheet. So I can buy these fairly inexpensive in Australia I think they're about ten dollars for a full sheet which by Australian art standards that is really really good price um, and available at my local art shop <laughs> so um, now this is again a hot press paper now hot press and cold press do react quite differently um, now again these these washes of the the um These washes are of the um, thick paint is very heavy, so it's easy to move it across. Um, again, I'm getting a nice amount of granulation through my granulating pigments. I'm getting a little bit of back running, um, cauliflowering in the um, the you know some of these other. Actually, the thalo is nice and flat. There's a bit of unevenness in the very, very, very heavy pigment um, swatches. Again, I would almost never put down paint this thick, really, in any, like, you might do it in very small areas, but certainly wouldn't be doing something about that size. Um, but again, we can see how smooth and flat these washes come out on this cotton paper. And I do like how the granulation on these is actually more pronounced than it is on the etcher. That's just a personal preference. It's not saying that there's anything wrong with either paper. It's just a personal preference. And it's also important for me to consider if I am doing portraiture and I don't want to see granulation or I want it more controllable, whether or not this would be the right paper for it or to choose pigments that don't granulate when I'm choosing which colors to work with. So this is an important part of learning your, like understanding what pigments are in your pa paints and how they react on the papers that you use. And then the last one we have is Ash, the one that we're always told we must use as watercolor artists. Now, I have a problem with that because in Australia, ash is very expensive, particularly if you're someone like me who genuinely needs to paint a lot to improve. Um, I just, it's at least double the price, you know, so I'd be lucky to generally pick up a sheet of ash for $20 Australian at my local art shop. It's probably closer to 25 sometimes more. So, and when you're trying to get blocks or pads, again, very expensive. So I'm really going to be thinking very carefully about what I'm doing with it. But when you have a look at these results, you can see why people use it and love it. Look, there is I can't see any noticeable cauliflowering on the dioxazine violets. And I saw that maybe just the faintest, faintest hint there. Now, things that I did notice, and you'll notice that all of the other swatches are beautiful and flat. Like, there's just no problems. And to be perfectly honest, I was even slacker with getting these. Like, it was just slosh, slosh, slosh. But this paper soaks up the moisture where I would put down a 
brush load of paint on one of these other pads and I still had water just sitting in pools when I'd finished doing the swatch. On some of these, I had to reload my brush just to have enough moisture because these were not pre-wet. These were, you know, it was, this paper took a lot of water. But once you actually saturated, which is what happened up here, when I put down that wash at the top, I put down lots of water. When it gets full, it gets full and it stays wet for a long time. So that's what's happened here. So all that sort of, it's dried out along here. But you can see there's very little movement between the different um, squares further along. So the arch really does hold on to those pigments quite well. Again, it lifts not as easily as the bamboo. It lifts quite controllably in most cases. And granulation, it does create a beautiful granulation pattern. Although I still probably have a weak spot for how the caddy paper granulation looks. So even, so you can see it's quite a different form of granulation, but this is just to me really beautiful. It just highlights that granulation so beautifully. But you will never go wrong with this. And I can see why people will always recommend working with a paper like this. So it does go down. Now the difference, another difference between them, um, this Arsh is cold press, this Bohong is hot press. So a smooth paper will always 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 tend to be more difficult to get an even flat wash with no back runs and cold press is generally more forgiving so often they'll tell a beginner start with cold press now from all of my testing and playing around with my papers um it was great to see how, like, to actually compare them side by side and actually go, oh, this worked like this on this paper and that looks like that. Excellent exercise, really worth doing. Um, it does remind me that I do actually have to pull out my arch and do some proper painting on it and not get so hung up on how expensive it is. Um, I'm always terrified of oh my gosh, I'll ruin the painting and I would have wasted that paper. Um, and I get far more that response when I start to work on something like Arsh than when I work on something like the Bohong. Um, the other pads and papers look fine for mucking around and trying things, but I really do have to think about what paper I'm using for what project. And if I'm going to be working on a project where I'm going to want to glaze and layer and build, going for 100% cotton is always going to be a better choice. So I hope you found some of that interesting. Um, did it help you? Do you have a favorite paper that you like working on? Or you know, and the other thing is, by doing these comparisons, it's wonderful to see that it's not always the case of your skills aren't up to it. Quite possibly your paper's not up to it. <laughs> so find out what's important to you with a paper. Like if you're after interesting granulation like this, you might seek out something that's a more... Um, has a more unique surface and will encourage this kind of granulation but if you want you know reliable consistent results maybe something like the arch is the way to go um the bohong cold press i will have to pull out a piece i swatch generally on bohong cold press so i'm quite happy with the way it behaves generally um and I think that it's reasonably comparable. Um, but look, it's been a, a fabulous exercise. So yes, my recommendation is where possible, paint on cotton paper. <laughs> so um, like, subscribe, share. Um, let me know what you think. Do you have favorite papers? Um, what's your experience working with different papers? Um, 
We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye.